Hello everyone, welcome to Zuma Motoring. My name is Nez. Now today, I'm comparing my current BMW Z4 E89 with a brand new G29 BMW Z4. Now first and foremost, I wanna say a huge thank you to Chandler's Brighton BMW for allowing me the opportunity to take the new G29 BMW Z4 out for the next few days. So, in this video, we're gonna compare the exterior details of both these cars, the interior, the roof, and the boot space. So, at the end of the video, I hope you guys can make a decision to see which you prefer. Before we get started, it's best to clarify that these cars are the exact same models. They are both 20i's, and BMW have decided to keep the same engine as in my current E89. So both of these cars have got a two litre four cylinder turbocharged engine but in my Z4 it makes 181 brake horsepower whereas in the new G29 it makes 197 brake horsepower. Torque is also up in the new car so it now makes 236 foot-pounds of torque whereas in my current E89 it makes 199 foot-pounds of torque. So guys if you compare the new G29 Z4 against my current E89 Z4 aesthetically in the engine bay you notice the strut braces have been moved forward whereas in my current one they're right at the back. The engine again as in my E89 is in line with the front wheels or just behind so it's front mid-engined as you can tell but in the new car, this is my current E89 by the way, in the new car, the engine seems slightly bigger. I don't know if that's the engine cover, the plastic cover, but as you can tell, in here it looks quite small and neat, and now it does seem significantly larger. Whether that's just the plastic housing. Another difference I thought to mention is when you open the bonnet, the new Z4 doesn't seem to have a bonnet latch, whereas on my current car, you actually have to push the latch to actually release the bonnet. Whereas in the new one, it's got a two-stage process. You have to pull the lever twice and then it opens. But just to note, there's actually no latch. So as soon as you open it, it's actually open. Whereas in the current one, there is a latch. Another point to make is the washer fluid has now been changed. As you can tell here, it's now on the side. Whereas in the E89 Z4, it's right here. Yep, those are the immediate changes you notice between the two cars. Nautic 62 times have actually decreased on the new G29 Z4. So my current E89 Z4, Nautic 60 is done in 6.9 seconds, whereas the new one is now 6.6 seconds. Top speed on the new one is 149 miles an hour, whereas on the E89 it's 142 miles per hour. Both come with eight speed automatic gearboxes, miles per gallon. Now, this is the really interesting fact. The miles per gallon on the current E89 is 41.5 miles per gallon, whereas in the new one, it's actually gone down to 39.8 miles per gallon. Now, to be honest, you can't really take this fact seriously because obviously it depends on the driving conditions, if they were actually fair, but the old E89 does seem to be more economical. The CO2 on the E89 Z4 is 159 grams per kilometer, whereas in the current G29 Z4 is 138 grams per kilometer. So, number two, let's go through the exterior details of both Z4s. So I'm gonna start off with a little fun fact. If you come closer, you notice that the G29's BMW badge is 30% larger than on my current E89 BMW Z4. Now, you guys make your mind up if you prefer a smaller badge or a larger badge like the new G29. Next up, you notice on the G29, it comes with these new honeycomb BMW kidney grills, obviously with the black surrounds. Now, this is a 3D pattern, whereas if you come on my current E89, it's got these lovely slats with the silver surround. Again, it's a good contrast. I don't know if you can option out on the G29 to have the silver um, surrounds. I think it will break up the front. But I quite like the stealth look at the same time as well. So you can argue both cases. Next up, we go to the headlights. Now, the G29's headlights, it's got brand new LED headlights, which are standard on all new Z4s. My current E89 has got LED daytime running lights, which are the BMW rings, the famous BMW rings, whereas the new car has completely changed design philosophy. Next up, you notice the lower front bumper. So this car's more angular than the current E89. I quite like this. But again, there's something classic about the current E89's front bumper. 
It's very minimalistic, not over designed, not over stylized, and there's something to be said about the classic lines of the E89. But that said, I do love the new angular design on the G29. Coming through, we notice straight away the bonnet lines. So my car, the signature piece of the front, which I like to think is these two iconic bonnet lines here. Whereas in the new one, it's, I don't know, it's not as striking as the E89. It's got these lines here. I'm not sure if they really define the front as much as the E89. If you look at the E89, the lines really come to the BMW badge and it really puts a strong stance on that front end. Whereas on the new one, I'm not sure if it gets a bit lost, but again, it's a new design philosophy. We just need to get used to it. Moving on, you notice on the side panel, on the new Z4, much more dynamic as you can tell, they channel air from the engine and they shuffle the air out to help cool the engine. Or as a my current E89, again, it's more classic. You've got this lovely LED side indicator here, the BMW badge and the model here. Whereas on a new one, it's much cleaner. You've just got the M badge. And again, the nice side vent design. I actually quite like this, it's quite neat. It's again, it's more up to date, more modern. Right, the mirrors. This is where I prefer my current E89. Now, if you look at the mirrors, I really love these mirrors. Whereas if you go to the new Z4, the G29, uh-oh, they've put the same mirrors as on that blue BMW 4 Series. Can you tell? Look at those mirrors. Now look at the new BMW Z4 G29 mirrors. Exactly the same, identical. Now, again, whether this is to save money, I don't know, I'm just being totally honest, I really prefer my current E89's mirrors. I just think they're more classic and they just go with the car. I understand maybe BMW are taking other bits from other cars just to help maybe save costs. Coming through the doors, another difference I can tell you. So the new car comes now, obviously keyless go. It's got a sensor, so every time I put here, you can hear the car unlocking and I can open. Whereas my E89 is much more uh, old school. So you actually have to unlock the car physically to get in. Coming through, so now both cars have got 19 inch wheels, but the big thing is the new car doesn't come with Bridgestone's run flat tires as standard. Now, this is a point I've been making since day one, that the Bridgestone run flats are quite hard. And unfortunately this car doesn't come with a spare wheel. So it's either you go for the run flats and obviously minimize uh, the issue of if you get a flat tire at least you can go to your next destination safer if you go for non-run flats There's that risk so glad to see that BMW have opted for Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires and the new one But you tell me guys which design do you prefer? Do you prefer my current design? Or do you prefer the new G29's design? I don't know. I quite like them both, but if you come through one of the big talking points about the new Z4 is obviously the soft top roof. Gone is the hard top roof on my current E89. So obviously this roof is much faster. In fact, it goes down in 10 seconds, whereas the E89 Z4's roof goes down in 20 seconds. So that's half the time it takes to go down. And obviously the big factor is luggage space, which we'll explore in a minute. Now the rear is where you will see another big difference between the two cars. The new car is much wider and it's got a much wider track so you can tell that the new car does look a lot bigger than the current E89. You can argue that the current E89 is much more sleeker than the new G29. Obviously the new car has this lovely, which I really love, I love these new L-shaped LED tail lights, really fantastic, whereas my car does have uh, slightly bulky lights, should I say. Uh, they're not as well integrated as the new car. One of the best things I love, and I'm really happy BMW have fixed this on the new Z4, is the exhaust pipes. One of the things I haven't been a fan of on the old car, on the E89, is the fact that they've got twin tailpipes on one side of the car. It's not as asymmetrical, it doesn't really flow with the rest of the car. Whereas in the new car, even though it's got a two litre four cylinder engine, you do think, cool, wow, those pipes are the side. It, it just looks good. I'm really, really happy that BMW have really gone to this design and put one pipe on the other side. And I think that's what they should have done. Obviously on the higher models from the 20i, the E89 does come in exhaust pipes either side. This car obviously has now got a much more accentuated diffuser. Whereas on my car, as you can tell on the 89, there's not really much of a diffuser. Another thing I love is the rear bumper. It's much more aggressive. 
perspective. Next up, you will notice the boot lid spoiler. So on the new G29, the boot lid spoiler is much more accentuated. It's much larger, it's much more pronounced. Whereas on my current one, it's not really much of a boot spoiler. I mean, it's a little bit, but it's not as aggressive as the current one. You also notice these reflector lights have also changed on the new car. They're now positioned within there, which I quite like. It's much cleaner. They're not as in your face. Parking sensors, again, all integrated within the bumper. They've moved the number plate, so the number plate sits much higher. On my current E89, it sits a lot lower. Another thing you notice is on the E89 Z4, it's got an integrated rear brake light on the actual boot, whereas it's now been moved on the G29 and it's now integrated as part of the much more pronounced ducktail spoiler. Next, let's compare the boots. Now, to open the boot on the E89, let's just remind ourselves how small the boot was. So if you come through, first of all, you'll notice that to open the boot, it's quite a cool system. So you push the BMW badge inwards, there's an electric mechanism that actually opens the boot for you and then you just have to lift it up. And there you go. So this is the E89 Z4's boot space. But obviously the issue is you've got so many obstructions in the way. So you've got this which supports the actual hardtop roof. And then when you need to put the roof down, you need to put the partitioner down and pull it down. And there you go. Suddenly all that boot space has been reduced. As you can tell, there's not much you can fit there. You struggle to fit a big size suitcase in there unless you push it more inwards or unless it's a soft shell bag. But that's where the issue is with the current E89 Z4 because of this partitioner. But I'd rather have this and have the hardtop roof and then the, the argument continues. But this is a slight issue with the current E89 Z4 whereas we've got a new one, if you follow me. Gone is that feature to open the boot. You can't push the BMW badge inwards anymore. You actually have to come underneath where there's a rear view camera, push the little button and then there you go. BMW claim that the boot capacity of the new G29 Z4 is 50% larger than on the current E89 Z4. That said, I can't really tell a big difference between the two. I mean, obviously you don't have the partitioner, but this is also obstructing because obviously you can't really fit larger items. Whereas on the current one, if you come over, you've got, it seems you can fit a lot more, but then again, you know, you've got, I don't know, it, it's really hard to tell. With the roof down, I guess points go to the new Z4 because roof up or down, you still have the same boot capacity. You've got your first aid kit, oh, your book pack, and you've got your load through uh, facility. My car has the current load through facility hatch as well. But that is it, and obviously if you compare, you've got the same uh, emergency kit up here. If you look got there, and if you look at my current car, it's also there, so they've kept that feature in there as well. The other thing though, the G29 doesn't have compared to my current E89 is that soft close feature. So look, if I just do that, don't close the boot, I actually have to physically push it down. Whereas if you come over to my current E89, I guess this is where the heaviness comes through. Look, it's got so many electronic gizmos. So there you go, look, if you just, and then it pushes and secures the boot down. So those are the main exterior differences between the two Z4s. One more thing to mention. If you look at both cars, the new G29 Z4 sits higher than my current E89. And I noticed that as soon as I pulled up next to it, that this car is slightly larger and slightly taller than the E89. Overall, it's a bigger car compared to the E89 Z4. Now, that's up to you to make your mind up. I like the welcome space because you notice that straight away when you go in the interior and that extra additional room is worthwhile. It's a little bit more refined, a little bit more spacious inside compared to the E89. We're now in the interior and this is where the new G29 Z4 really has it on the E89 because they've really upped the quality and the technology within the interior. First of all, you've got this brand new steering wheel. Uh, really nice, again, not too many buttons. They've only added the additional buttons of now the cruise control. So it's just a quick uh, button press. Feels about the same size, actually. I would say that's about the same size as my current E89, which is good. The paddles, yep, they feel good, good quality. Uh, indicator stalks up here, again nice, but the real big talking point about this car is the new TFT digital display. As I'm sure you can tell now, it's all digital. Gone are the analog gauges. So if I give it a quick rev, 
as you can see on the right hand side you can see your rev counter right there really fantastic really clear really well laid out and if you come to the center here again more tech you still got your fantastic iDrive system right here so you can now control your media communications nav the car apps yeah fantastic and I've also been told that that navigation also comes within the instrument cluster so I've got the navigation right in front of me and this car also comes with the heads up display I'm not sure if you can see the zero there right in front of us so again another step up from the current E89 heads up display gone are the aluminium carbon fiber effect gone are the knobs you now just got buttons as you can tell yeah, you got your heat seat buttons you got your air conditioning controls right there the usb port has now been moved forward because in the e89 it used to be within the center console but that's been moved forward there which is quite cool actually because if i'm plugging my phone if i want to uh, use my phone in terms of ways that's fantastic i don't have to have a uh, an iphone cable stretching all the way back down so that's quite nice that you can now uh, you got your port up there. This car also comes with wireless charging. Again, another much welcome added technology feature. Uh, and obviously you can push that and that closes. I think you've got this lovely aluminum carbon fibery effect um, um, finish on the center console. It's quite nice. And obviously you've got Z4 uh, logo right there. I'm not sure if you can see that. But down here, you got your brand new gear selector. I really love this. I think this is really stylish. Put it in drive, same as in the current E89. Just push that and it goes in drive and you push it back in neutral and you push that button. It's now in park. You got your iDrive controls right here. Media, home, map, uh, communication, navigation. Now, interestingly, they've moved the uh, roof button to here. And on the E89, you used to have two um, switches to one for the roof up and one for the roof down. You still have two buttons and now they've just integrated into one. You've got a parking brake here. Uh, you've got your uh, mode switches here. So you've got a Sport Comfort Eco Pro Adaptive. We'll explore those later. Start stop button here. Uh, auto start stop, parking sensors and your traction control button. But yeah, overall it's a much, much better quality interior. It feels more expensive. This car comes with lovely, beautiful, red leather seats again really up on the quality and they look like they'll last a long long time it's got lovely decorative stitching and obviously and up here you've got your soft top roof in another video we'll go through the options you can get on the z4 they've kept the storage net so this is really handy actually if you're going away on road trips just to put your bits and bobs in there so that's good for storage you've got your speaker surrounds here and down here sorry so you've got your um, armrest here and you just press that button right here and that opens up the center armrest as well as the cup holders much bigger cup holders uh, you got another usb button slot there and yeah that's really good again really good quality and the seats are fantastic uh love the design so yes that is the new z4's interior in a nutshell let's move over to the current e89 and we'll compare the interior of that and see how far bmw have come immediately i can notice that i'm sitting a lot lower than the g29 z4 as you can tell you can just see where the window starts on the new one and look where the window starts on my current one i'm sitting a lot lot lower so there you go i quite like the lower driving position that's what makes these cars quite fun it's low got that long bonnet and it just adds to the driving experience so the new car is significantly larger in terms of the cabin space we're back to the analog gauges as you can tell all white and all very clear so in terms of the multimedia system it now looks a bit dated compared to the new one but again the new one's got much more tech much more functionality and yeah it's, it's much better let's just own up to that uh, you've got your air conditioning controls you've got your hazard switches there your lock button to lock the doors and unlock you've got your toggle switches here to control the air conditioning whereas in the new one it's now just buttons um, let's turn that off Next up, you've got your CD player and your volume control there. So this is where the other changes are compared to the current G29. So you've got your two roof buttons here on the E89, whereas in the G29, they've now moved down here. Uh, you've got your heated seat buttons down there. Again, on the G29, they're much higher. Moving on, you've got your ashtray, your gear selector. On the new G29, it's much smaller. I quite like the design on the new one, to be fair. Uh, you've got your driving mode switches here, Sport, Sport Plus and Comfort. You've got a traction control button here, your parking brake and your iDrive control. So it seems much simpler than the new car. Going through, you've got the Carbon Effect uh, aluminium trim, whereas the new one comes with a mixture of piano black and uh, that Carbon Effect 
uh, trim on the center console. Another thing I need to point out in the new one, it's got new door handles. So as you can tell on the E89, you've got these ones, but the cabin does seem a lot smaller. The seats, again, simpler design. Love these seats, very simple. I spent mine in black, just to keep it clean and simple. Black, black, with silver wheels. Uh, this car, again, if you notice on the G29, it comes with the speaker grills next to the window there. So they've kept that same design. I love this steering wheel on the E89. Very simple, the eight buttons on the steering wheel. The paddles on the new car are much better. These are plastic and the newer car. They are still plastic, but they got a better finish. So yeah, guys, that is the interior of the E89 Z4. I love the features of the new car, but also love the intimateness of the E89. Let's move on to the roofs. To put the roof down, there's two buttons. There's a roof up and a roof down button, whereas in the G29, you just have one button to do everything. So if you push it down, and if you go to the back, just watch the mechanism. So if you go back down, if you go up, have a look. So this mechanism goes up, the root boot hatch comes up and the whole roof then lifts. To put the roof down, it's a very simple process. So obviously you start the car up and then push the button. simple as that so that took just 10 seconds which is half the time it takes my current e89 to put its roof down so guys the roofs are now down on both cars i do love how wide this car looks though it does look quite aggressive it looks a little bit meaner a little bit chunkier uh immediately you notice with the roofs down the hoops are much smaller on the new g29 whereas on the e89 the hoops are much larger. Obviously you've got your wind deflectors on both and you've got your soft top roofs. Both roofs down, they look absolutely fantastic. There you go. So it'll be interesting to see what this car is like to drive. I haven't actually driven the new car yet. I've literally just picked it up, collected it and come straight here to do this second video. So it'll be very interesting. Hopefully in a few days time, I'll do a proper living with video and explain to you guys what it's like to live with the new Z4. Obviously, hopefully I'd like to think I'm quite experienced because obviously I've had this car for the last three years, used it absolutely every day, commuted in it, gone on road trips with it. And uh, yeah, it's been the filming car for many things. So that's my absolute workhorse. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what this new car is like. In terms of value wise, brand new, the E89 Z4 was 29,480 with no options. Whereas on the new G29, it's 36,995 with nothing on it basic 29480 versus 36995 but obviously this car it's been out for a while and obviously with the economic times things move on you get a lot more for your money your capacity on the e89 z4 is 55 liters whereas in the g29 z4 is 52 liters next up let's talk about the exhaust sounds as i said earlier these cars both come with two liter four cylinder turbocharged engines but let's see if BMW have really worked on the exhaust system and made this car, the new G29, much louder. So I'm gonna jump in my current E89, start that up, give it a few revs, and I'll jump in the G29. And I want you guys to tell me in the comment section below which you think sounds louder, the E89 or the G29. So let's go. difference I noticed personally sitting in both cars is the new G29 does seem to have more turbo whistles and more pops and bangs which is much more welcome because that's one thing I've always wanted because I've always thought about actually adding an aftermarket exhaust to my current E89 so I'm really happy to see that BMW have added more pops and bangs and actually hear the intake and the turbo whistle so that's a really good positive point 
on the new G29 2 litre Z4. So guys, that is it. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully you enjoyed that comparison of both cars. And hopefully I've covered every single aspect of the questions you potentially maybe had about these two cars. Maybe if you're considering buying this or buying the new one. As you can tell, the new one is a much welcome change in terms of the technology and in terms of design wise, it's moved the game forward. But, you know, there's a little bit of me that thinks the old one is still a little bit more sleeker, it's a little bit more stylish. Though the new one does have some really nice design cues, but uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Which one do you prefer, the E89 Z4 or the new G29 Z4? Again, a huge thank you to Chandler's Brighton BMW for allowing me the opportunity to do this and to take this car out for a few days. Make sure you follow them on their platforms below, their social media and on their website. And if you are looking for a brand new BMW Z4, make sure you hit them up. And if you're looking for a test drive, make sure you call them up and I'm sure they'll be happy to help and get you out in one of these new Z4s. So guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.